Hi! In today's video, we'll be talking about AV fistulas or dialysis access. A dialysis access is something that a vascular surgeon can um, create for a patient so that they can have regular dialysis. This is done when long-term dialysis is needed. This access is created by most often connecting a vein, a superficial vein, either the cephalic vein or the basilic vein to an artery to then cause that vein to be arterialized, which allows it to be larger because it's under pressure and is receiving a larger volume of blood. So this is the cephalic vein. It runs superficial in the arm and you can compress it to make sure that there's no clot in it. And you'll measure the proximal, mid, and distal part of the cephalic vein to show and document if it is big enough to use for an AV fistula. You want it to be at least three millimeters. And again, here is mid, and you'll measure that. This is all important information for your vascular surgeon. Then you come down distally, measure it here. Try to be careful not to compress it too much with the weight of the transducer on the skin. And also, as you're going down, you can also document patency of the artery that they would be using, putting color, on that artery, and then you can continue down looking at the cephalic vein. Now this one branched into, goes into the deep system, but continues on. It, you can see it's getting smaller in the forearm. but it's still three millimeters. If it stays over three millimeters all the way to the wrist, often the doctors will choose to hook the cephalic vein into the radial artery. And again, at the wrist, check the radial artery for patency. And when the cephalic vein is too small, you will look at the basilic vein, which usually branches at the mid part of the brachial veins. You see the brachial vein, two brachial veins and a brachial artery there. The artery is not compressing. You come down, there's the basilic coming off, and that's at mid arm. And again, try not to compress it so that when you take your measurement, It's not a compressed vein. But if the cephalic is big enough, they will use that because it is more superficially located. So therefore, when it's made into an AV fistula, it will be easier to access for the dialysis nurses. You can see here's the cephalic vein compared to the basilic vein which is much deeper. Okay. What do you do if both of the veins are too small? Oh, if both of the veins are too small, the vascular surgeon can use a Gore-Tex graph. It's basically a hose um, that they can put inside a person and they will hook it to the brachial artery and then hook it to the brachial vein. Sometimes if the brachial veins are too small, they may hook it to the brachial artery loop it around and feed it into the axillary vein. This is one example of a fistula that is created. When the cephalic vein is large enough all the way down to the wrist, 
they will connect the cephalic vein to the radial artery. When you document this fistula, you get a picture just before the anastomosis right here. This is the native inflow. Then you would get a picture here at the inflow anastomosis, and then along the track of the fistula, if there's no areas of narrowing, you would just do proximal, mid, and distal. Of course, along your imaging, if there's a narrow spot, that can be your proximal or mid or distal, depending on where the narrowing is, whether that narrowing is due to thrombus or due to the fact that the vein has not matured yet. When you get your velocity here and all along the fistula, you will get the systolic velocity and the diastolic velocity, but you will also get the volume flow. The, the flow volume tells you how much blood is going through and you will be measuring the size of the artery. You'll measure from intima to intima, telling the machine the size of the vessel that you're getting your tracing from. And you'll do that at all these points. Now, if you have the vein is only big enough in the upper arm, they will take the cephalic vein and hook it into the brachial artery at the antecubital fossa or in that area. Then your tracing for the native inflow would be just before your anastomosis. And again, at the anastomosis, then proximal mid distal. If for the basilic, if the cephalic is too small and they use the basilic, this basilic will be hooked in the same way at the brachial artery. And if there's a lot of fat in the arm, sometimes they need to bring that, reposition the basilic vein in a separate surgery to bring it more superficial. If the cephalic and the basilic are both too small, then a loop graft can be made. In that case, they take the Gore-Tex graft and they hook it in to the brachial artery. And then they bring it and hook it into the cephalic vein or the brachial, uh, brachial vein. All of this is determined in the pre-op mapping part of the planning. And in this case, you would do your first velocity and flow volume would be in the native inflow, which would be in the brachial artery before the anastomosis. Then you would do proximal, the inflow anastomosis, then proximal, mid, and distal. And then the outflow anastomosis would be your next picture right here and your native outflow. So on the Philips Epic ultrasound machine, when you have a tracing, this is of my brachial artery, and I have the HQ on that automatically measures the waveform and gives you a velocity here and the temporal average peak velocity as well. You can go into the measure tab and pick flow vo volume flow. And here the machine prompts you to tell it where the artery is, there and here. See how you can tell it how big that vessel is? And in doing so, and then you come down here when you've told it where the walls are, hit done, and then it gives you the volume flow which in this case is 160 cc's per minute. Now, if I had a fistula that was hooked at my brachial artery just past there, the volume flow would be, be would be bigger and the waveform would not come down 
and much less past baseline in the, dias in the diastolic part of the waveform. This is a resistive waveform, which is typical in the arm or the leg when the flow is going to a muscle vascular bed. If it was going directly into a vein and that fistula was patent and working, you would have lots of diastolic flow. It would look more like this. This is the waveform that you would expect in an artery that is flowing into a low resistance vascular bed. This happens to be my ICA, but in a fistula, if a fistula was in place and this was a brachial artery, this is what the waveform would look like here. The lots of diastolic flow. It doesn't go below baseline. And if that waveform was just before an AV fistula, you would expect to see an appropriately functioning fistula.